going to begin today in 1 John 2. And what I wanted to talk about today is the will of God. And what you'll notice in the Bible is the Bible talks about in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established. You will notice that certain words, certain phrases will come up time and time again in the Bible. Things that the prophets wrote about that will help you establish the fact that this is the doctrine of Christ. This is in line with the teaching of what God, the message he's delivered. So remember that when you go to seek an answer in the word, make sure it balances out in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Now the Bible says, love not the world in 1 John 2, 15, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides forever. You have to be a doer of the word. Now, I know people talk and they argue and they fuss about, well, once saved, always saved. And they think, well, I just make a commitment at some altar and then I walk away and I can go do what I want. Or, Well, all you do is agree to God's plan of salvation. That's a good start. But the Bible is very specific that you have, in order to continue, you have to do the will of God. That's what you do each and every day. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added. Well, you make doing the will of God a priority. It says, the Bible says, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. So if you're going to do the will of God, you got to do it in his realm, in his turf. Because he said he's a spirit. God does specific say he's a spirit. And they that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So you have to get on his turf, which is the realm of the spirit, if you're going to do the will of God. The carnal mind is enmity. You have to get the carnal mind out of the way. How? By renewing the mind with the spirit of Christ. So you have the mind of Christ. Now you can see and hear and understand what the will of God is for you personally for today. Because that's what you need to know. And that's the only thing that's going to get you home. You have to do the will of God. And as we see the warnings, there's a lot of things in the world that can distract you. That can mislead you. Things that appeal to the lower sin nature. And not the new man in Christ. You know, people, I don't, I don't get this, that they think that just because they got saved, their sin nature, their lower nature just ran away. It disintegrated. No, of course not. Why would the devil, why did the devil try to tempt the Lord? He tried to tempt his lower nature. Why would he try to tempt you? You have a lower sin nature. It's still there. You need, Paul talked about, I die daily. You have to die to that sin nature every day. Not just on certain holidays or certain days that you decide to go to church. We're going to, you know, subdue a little bit of the flesh so I can show up and put on. No, nonsense. You have to, you have to die to self in order to do the will of God. The spirit is willing. So that's the realm you have to be in in order to do the will of God. Now you can turn over a little bit as long as we're in John. In 1 John 5, 13, talks about these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. On the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desire of him. Well, if you're not sure, if your life is a little bit shaky, if you're living in doubt or confusion, it's because you don't know. And the Bible is specific. Unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. You want to know these things, not guess or hope. You're not going to stand before the throne and be wishy -wishy. Well, I, I hope I didn't. No, you want to know. Let's settle that today. Let's know. And that's where the confidence is built, because I'm asking things according to his will, things that will benefit my walk, my spiritual walk. I'm not doing this to consume it upon my lusts. And then you have the petitions. Why? So that you can move forward in your walk with the Lord. 
and not be bogged down with the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, or lusts of other things. Let's go over to Titus. And by the way, church, for your, for your reference, in the New Testament, all from Thessalonians, Timothy, Titus, all the T's are in a row. I remember somebody told me that a while ago, and it kind of helped to help find. But Titus, and I can remember what verse I was looking for here, Titus 1.7. And it talks about the people that desired the office of a bishop, an overseer, an elder in the church. What does it require? Well, let's start at verse 5. For this cause I left thee in Crete, and this was Paul writing, Paul's writing to Titus, the epistle to Titus, that you should set in order the things that are wanting or lacking and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. If any man be blameless to husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Well, that rules out a lot, a lot of what we see out there today. But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince or convict or rebuke the gainsayers, the opposers. So before God's going to use you, you have to get self out of the way, it's your own self will. I know in many cases, and I've seen this, it's like the Lord said in John 6, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you saw you got hold of the, the loaves of bread and had your belly full. A lot of people want to serve the Lord because they want a good life here on earth. Not because they want to serve the Lord, but they just want their life blessed. I've seen a lot of what I call carnal Christians do that. They want the white picket fence. They want God to bless them. Bless, bless, bless. But are they willing to do the will of God? No. Eventually they fall away. When persecution or affliction arises for the worst sake, they fall away. But not self-willed. Isaiah 119, and, and when I throw these verses out, you can go back and look at them later, it says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But it, and then it goes on talking about, it, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. If you be willing and obedient. Obedience is very important. Willing. Well, it's the spirit that's willing. So if you get up first thing in the day and, and get the spirit man, you know, get that engine started. Get that thing warmed up. Start revving it up. Get that engine going. You're going to start moving forward in the realm of the spirit. You're not going to sit back in the realm of the flesh and hesitate and be double-minded. You know, I watched a movie the other day and they talked about the leader took the guy aside and he says, I need you to obey me. No questions asked. Sometimes we spend too much time analyzing. What do they call that? Analyze, analyst paralysis, analyzing everything. Get out there. Take that step. If you know what's the Lord asking you, step out, faith. That's the only way he's going to confirm his word with signs following is if you step out there in faith and get on the path that you belong. The one that he chose for you. The will of God. God has a will. For you. And please, for your own sake, don't downplay yourself just because you're not called to the fivefold ministry. If you're not an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, that doesn't mean you're any less in the sight of God. He still has a plan and a will for you. Find out what that is. Follow through with it. Let the peace of God rule. Let's go to let's go back to John six. And I'm in verse 37. And this is the Lord speaking. All that the Father gives me shall come to me. And him that comes to me will no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of 
all she hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up the last day. The will of God is that you understand the Father and the Son. John 5.23 talks about if you don't honor the Son, you can't honor the Father. And if you don't honor the Father, you can't honor, honor the Son. So the will of God is to, sh is to show you who his Son is, who the mediator is, who set the example. Because this is a man who did the will of God. And he did it so well. Guess where he's at today? Yeah, he's seated at the right hand of God. The Bible talks about that in Revelation, when he separates the sheep from the goats. The sheep will be on the right side, the goats will be left out. Well, this man was the firstborn, the first begotten. He's the first one that entered that heavenly realm. Now seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for you. So that he can show you, encourage you, build you up spiritually. And show you what the will of God is for you, for your life. And that's what you need to know. What is the will of God for your own life? Otherwise, you're just going to be meandering around. So you're going to be uh, in the twilight zone. You're going to be in a haze. You're not, you're not going to be sure where you're going. Uh, and if we go back, uh, let's go back to Matthew 7. Matthew 7. I'm going to start at verse 21 here. Now you're going to see the difference between religion and reality. Because there's two realms. There's religion and then there's reality. We've got so much religion out there. It's devil's playground. That's what, people, that's what the devil enjoys. Then there's reality. Those that know the Son and know the will of the Father. Not everyone that saith unto me, Matthew 7, 21, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. There's that doer part. And so many places talk about doing. Uh, James 4.17 talks about to him that knows to do good and does it not to him in sin. When you know what you need to do and then you willingly become ignorant. The Bible talks about willingly ignorant. Well, there's that will again. It becomes sin. Uh, Romans 14.23 talks about whatsoever is not a faith is sin. You can't do something faithfully then you shouldn't be doing it. If you have to hide it or conceal it or pretend it's not happening, that's not of God. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And I've said this time and time again. You see three question marks. Where? The name. They didn't know who the son is. A lot of people think it's Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Well, we got millions and millions of Jesuses out there. But they don't know who Christ is, the Son of the living God, the one that came down from heaven and was within Jesus of Nazareth. They just, some people have the nerve to think that Jesus was God. Blasphemy. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The Bible talks about the rock. There's a spiritual rock. There's only one foundation. Other foundation can no man lay than that which is Jesus Christ. If Christ isn't in the foundation, you're on shaky ground. You're on you're on sand. Well, and it talks about it. So these are one, this is a man, a wise man, Jesus of Nazareth, who built his house upon a rock, Christ. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon this house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Well, the floods of ungodliness and false doctrines and the winds of doctrine are going to blow your way. Unless you're founded on a rock, you fall for them. If you don't take a stand with the Lord on, on the rock foundation, you'll fall for anything. And the rain descended, flesh came, beat upon that house, and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, or what I would call the earth, earthly doctrines, the bits and pieces. But they're not one. They're not put together to one rock, one rock solid foundation. 
And the rain descended, the floods came, winds blew and beat upon that house, and fell, and great was the fall of it. The will of God. God has will. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He has a will for you. Are you willing? Will you be willing and obedient? If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good land. You shall get your inheritance. You have to be a doer. And not just a hearer only. So church, let's find out today for you personally. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and find out what his will is for you personally. God bless. Stay willing and obedient.